Hi, I'm Nick Hudson. Uh, I'm originally from Sydney, Australia. I'm a photographer. Uh, and these are my three photos. Uh, I'm going to start with this image here. Uh, I shot on Polaroid. Uh, actually, I shot two frames. This is the second frame. And this was a really important moment for me because I was really struck by how the medium um, can bring something to the process and to the image that um, is, it's, it's just a really important, uh, one of the really important choices you have to make. So it's obviously what you're taking a picture of, uh, the setting and what you're using to shoot with. So um, this was a model who came to my studio. Uh, we took a couple of, we took two frames, they're the frames and it really pushed me back into shooting analog, uh, which is where I started many years ago. So I pulled out my old cameras. This was about 2012, 2013, and I didn't look back from that point. To me, these images are meaningful because just on their face value, I still find them to be really images I'm proud of, but on a symbolic level, that was the moment where I decided to invest heavily in Polaroid medium format film, 35 mil film, and even other formats such as 4x5 and 8x10. Um, it really uh, impressed upon me the value of being able to choose your format, being able to choose your, your medium and how that can really help tell the story you're trying to tell or capture a subject the way you want to capture them. Speaking of Polaroid, uh, this was a, uh, my second image. This is an 8x10 Polaroid. Uh, this is a really, uh, it's a really interesting format because it's very slow. And after shooting for years digitally, uh, there's something really uh, relaxing about just slowing everything down. The whole mood on set changes. And again, you get to use this incredible, this incredible technology that just has its final color, its final contrast, and its imperfections. I mean, there's, there's banding through the center of the image. And luckily, she happens to fall right in the center there of that slightly different color tone. Um, and there's nothing that happens after that. This is my final image. It's a, when I shoot medium format or 35 mil film, we process the film, then we scan it to have a, a preview of the image, and then it'll go into the darkroom for a print or it'll go in for a high res scan. But with Polaroid, it's instant, even though it's a slow process at the time with 8x10 because the, the sheet has to go into a processor um, and it's a very slow process. It's, it's a final color. It's a final look and feel, and it removes a whole lot of those decision points that you have to make, uh, which is really appealing to me. So one of the things I'm really enjoying is slowing everything down, and I think that at the moment with social media, we're consuming images at, a, at such a fast pace. We've got a voracious appetite, and um, in a way, it feels like the image has become more disposable. Uh, so when you take more time creating an image and utilizing different technologies, um, one of my cameras is 70 years old and I use the, the tripod that was bought with that camera 70 years ago in New York on Lexington Avenue. Um, it feels like I'm connecting to something and a time where the image, the still image is, is, is valued and something people would spend time with the image rather than scrolling past it and a million other images in that day. Um, so there's something else that reveals itself in the image when you spend time with it. Um, and that's why I think prints are incredible. And it's, this is a photograph. Um, a digital image is a digital image. And you can create incredible prints from digital images. And all of these technologies that we have available are all incredible. Um, but I, they're just sort of paintbrushes in your toolbox. And um, you know, the, 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 the more accessible, I think, uh, photography is, filmmaking is, the more interesting it is for me to delve into things that less and less people are doing and um, to not rely on post-production to get a look and feel or um, to actually delve into the materiality. So certain film stocks have certain characteristics and the way you rate your film, the way you process the film, the way you then print your film or scan your film um, all have an impact. An impact. They all have an impact. Um, on, on how your image ends up looking. Here's an image that I printed in the darkroom myself, complete with light leak um, from a bad film back, I think it is. Um, 
So again, it's, it's just slowing everything down and to get a somewhat decent color print in a dark room takes a little bit of time and patience and you gotta make a lot of mistakes before you get to something that you find reasonably decent. Um, and this was a really lovely day working with friends, um, shooting at my friend's house uh, for a brand that I really believe in philosophically and I love supporting my friends and when I get a chance to, to help create images for them and their brand, it, it adds a hell of a lot more meaning to the process for me and the outcome. Um, but again, to be able to shoot on medium format film and then take that negative into the lab and make a print and see it come out differently to how it did when it was a scan from the, a preview scan from the, from the film lab. It's really a rewarding experience. Um, so you get a certain blue or a certain um, skin tone that, that you, know, you maybe haven't seen before and it's, it's exciting. And I love mistakes and obviously the, this frame the whole top part of it is a mistake, um, but I think it adds a little bit of um, charm to the image. I don't know, I'm very drawn. I'm very, very, ob obviously you can see this, these images have a lot of mistakes in them. and um, I think mistakes are a really important part of the creative process. This is a print that I didn't make. Um, this was from a Vogue Russia story we shot in Paris. I think it was August last year. So obviously the previous print I showed you, I printed myself. This was printed by a far better printer than me. Um, I have a guy in London who's been printing for decades and he's a master printer. Um, so when I can, I send my negatives to him to print in the dark room and then he'll scan the images and send them to me. Um, and I love being able to work with other people who are really good at what they do. And that's what makes that's what elevates, I think, my experience and, and the outcome. Um, and it's, it's really like cooking. If you have really good ingredients, you, know, you don't have to do a lot. Um, and I think that's what I try to do in my work is uh, start with good ingredients, good subjects, um, somewhat of a narrative behind what we're doing, a reason we're doing it, um, and not over-engineer anything, not too much makeup or hair or... Uh, or if we do do something, I mean, there's, there's some pretty crazy makeup going on, but you can see it's very hand done. There, there's not really any retouching there to speak of. Um, and uh, I think, yeah, it's a simplicity for me that I'm really drawn to in life, in design, in architecture, um, in art, in photography. And um, I love using daylight. And when I can't use daylight, I fake it. I re try to replicate daylight as much as I can. Um, but yeah, I'm really fortunate that I have an incredible printer that I work with uh, who can bring something out of my images that I probably really would have a hard time bringing out myself in the dark room just because I'm a novice printer and he's an expert printer. So um, I'm very fortunate that I get to work with people like that. He's printed with some incredible photographers and uh, that's a real honor for me. Here's another print by the same printer. Um, that was shot on 35 mil. Um, the other images I showed you were shot on medium format um, and obviously different Polaroid formats. Um, there's something about a, a hand print in the lab um, that I just don't find in scans. So this was an image shot for another Vogue title. I think it was Vogue Arabia. Um, but again, it was a heavy makeup um, thing, which I've just really started to um, actually appreciate here and there. Um, I was such a um, advocate for, you know, not for seeing the girl and letting her come through. But in this case, we created more of a character, and I think it really worked. And it opened my eyes to shifting and changing and being being able to kind of embrace a different approach, um, which was really rewarding. Actually, this was a funny day. We there were three photographers shooting in the same studio for the same magazine with the same stylist, the same set designer and creative director. And I think I had about two, maybe three hours to shoot uh, the entire story. So, uh, I don't know, I love limitations actually. And that was a really good example of having very minimal amount of time, but we had a great team. So we got a really great result. Uh, so this is my biggest print. 
I uh, shot this in Biarritz a few years ago. It's a really simple minimalistic print that appeals to me because there's almost nothing in the frame. It's a grainy uh, transition of colors, um, very subtle, there's not much to it. Um, and I think that's why I like it. So one of the things that I think is important to address is that um, I also shoot digital and there are some photographers that I have incredible amount of respect for who are working at a level, creating imagery that I could only ever dream of making that are shooting purely on digital. Um, I don't think film is better than digital. I just think that it suits what I do better and I enjoy the process of it. Um, and this is something I'm really enjoying. And I think it's because it feels more tangible. And one of the beautiful things about photography is that you can go to work and collaborate with people, often people you, you really admire and respect and that you like and you have a nice experience. And at the end of the day, you have something tangible to show for it, for your day's work. And um, when you end up making prints, uh, it makes it even more special. It takes it to another place. Rather than handing off a hard drive or sending files, um, at the end of it, it's nice to uh, have a finished product. Uh, and I think that's one of the very fortunate things about photography. Uh, it's, it's, you know, if, if you're an architect, it can take years to see something become manifest that's been in your mind and obviously that would be an incredibly rewarding thing, but um, you can just spend one day and have an incredible amount of um, finished products that, that you can feel really good about. So the story behind this 8x10 Polaroid with this very talented young actress, Sophia Lillis, uh, oftentimes you get an opportunity to photograph someone who uh, you find interesting or might be a good person to spend some time with and take pictures of. Uh, and so you invest your own money. Uh, some of these magazines don't offer a budget, uh, but it's a project you want to do. So uh, I spent the money on the Polaroid and, uh, you know, this time and energy brought a full team together, but the magazine went uh, out of business. So um, this is something that happens in this time where magazines are closing and uh, it's a really uncertain time for print media. Um, but I really don't have any regrets about doing the shoot because um, you know, we had a great day and we, we got some great images. Um, Sophia came along with her mother, she was 16, incredibly shy, but the moment a camera is on her, she just has a presence about her. It was really extraordinary. She was just seemed like a normal, shy 16-year-old kid who would be really tough, but the moment she was there, she was just, Incredible. That's one of the fascinating things I think about some of these subjects is it's often the people you least expect that have a presence on screen or on camera. I'm Nick Hudson and these are my three photos.